How's it brews? Today we're going to brew our stove top beer kit. How's it everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Robert and this is Yebrew. Today we're going to show you how easy it is to brew one of our extract recipe kits. Now we're doing it on, on a stove top here today since we know all of you have got a stove top available in a small pot that you would require. We're going to run you through what you need or let's run through what you get in the kit firstly. Um, first of all you get a step-by-step -step instruction manual that will run you through the brew day. Secondly, a small amount of steeping grain that we will show you the process. You get a can of extract liquid malt and a packet of brewing answer. You then get a small packet of hops and a packet of yeast. We also give you a small packet of priming sugar to prime your bottles for carbonation uh, on bottling day. You're not going to use that today on the brew day. So let's set the yeast packet aside and the priming sugar. The equipment that you would require additional that won't come in the, the extract recipe kit is uh, two mesh bags. One is uh, what we call a small mesh bag which you will use to steep the grain in the, in the water and then a hop bag which you get, will add the hops in for the boil. Of course, you would need a 25 liter bucket fermenter or whatever fermenter you've got available to you. So let's get it going, guys. Oh, and you will need a pot that's big enough to boil five liters of water. We've got an eight liter pot here today. We've already got our five liters of water inside of the pot and we've already brought it up to temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. So you want to be at six, six, between 60 and 70 degrees for the steeping process. So you're going to start by heating up your water of course to the steeping temperature. We're then going to add our steeping malts. So today we're doing the stout kit as you saw. So we've got nice dark roasted malts for the steeping grain. We're then going to add that to our mesh bag. Close it and you can just give it a loose knot. Okay, you then would want to steep that inside of the water like tea for 30 minutes at this temperature. So at, at this current stage our flame is off just let the grain steep for 30 minutes. So you can put it in with a spoon just to get all the malts inside of the bag nicely soaked. And then you will just let it sit for 30 minutes before you move on to the next step. Okay, we've now reached our uh, 30 minute mark on the steeping of the, of the grains. So you would want to remove that grain bag now. Just be careful to burn yourself. Now at this point you can squeeze the bag if you want to get uh, some extra liquid out of it. The reason why people say don't squeeze the bag is you can get some of the husk from the grain into your liquid which is better not to have for a clearer beer in your fermenter. So we're going to not squeeze this bag. Move it over to a place where it's not going to make a mess. And then you want to switch back, you want to switch the heat back on and uh, get it to a boiling point. But before you do that, you're going to add these two ingredients. We're going to add the dry malt first. They are known to make lumps. So you want to add it slowly and stir while you do so. You 
you add the whole bag. That's why we've steeped the dark malts in the beginning. beforehand so it would make the viscosity a bit less and it will make it a bit more runny when you pour it so you can get a bit more out uh, alternatively afterwards just add a bit of hot liquid in here from your kettle and uh, just give it a bit of a shake and pour into the pot now that we've added those two ingredients we would want to bring this to a boil and once it's starting to boil we're going to add the hops Okay guys, so we've reached our boiling point, so we would now want to add the hops, which is the little silver packet you get in your kit. Now you can reuse, if you've only got one mesh bag, which was the one we used in the beginning for the grains, you can chuck out the grain and reuse that to put your hops in. Uh, these bags are all reusable, of course, you just wash them and use them on your next batch. If you don't have these bags, they are available online. As I've mentioned before, the one used in the beginning is called a small mesh bag and this one is a hot bag. So you would just want to open this hot bag, add it into the mesh bag and then drop it into the boil. So this recipe calls for a 40 minute boil. So from the point you drop the hops in, you, you time 40 minutes and you then stop the flame and then we are going to chill it and transfer it to our fermenter. So this, this 40 minutes gives you time to start sanitizing and cleaning all your equipment you're going to use further, your fermenter, etc. And once the boil is done, you will be able to just transfer. So I'm dropping my bag in and I'm going to let it sit for 40 minutes. switch off the heat and then we need to chill this wort and add into our fermenter and pitch the uh, yeast so the yeast we are 
supplying you with the recipe calls for a 18 to 25 degree uh, Celsius to ferment in so you want to ideally get the wort to that temperature before you pitch the yeast so there's different ways you can do that uh, depending on the equipment available to you we're just doing the bare basics today which is adding a bit of ice into the fermenter first then pouring the five liter water on top of that and topping it up with cold water if you don't want to do the ice method you can also cool down the pot by adding that into a bucket of ice water just so it floats into the bucket of ice water and cooling down the water that's inside of the pot and then adding it to your fermenter now guys when this is hot it's best to add a bit of cold water to your fermenter first and then the hot liquid on top because some of the fermenters you get might melt or deform when you add boiling water to it so we're going to switch off here and, and remove our hops and we're going to remove the hop bag again guys don't throw away these mesh bags you can just uh, chuck out the hops and wash the bag for your next brew day just trying to get most of the liquid out of the hop bag now remember guys after the boiling point everything that gets into contact with the wort needs to be sanitized properly because this is where you can get infections so it's handy we always keep an additional bucket of sanitizer nearby if we need to sanitize let's say the yeast packet the outside of the yeast packet and our hands for instance and it's also handy to have a spray bottle filled with some sanitizer so that you can just spray let your, some of the equipment you are going to use after the boil so we remember guys this liquid is super hot so we're going to add the ice to our fermenter now normally you would add uh, this kit makes 20 liter of beer and you've done a five liter boil so you would want to add about 16 liters of water uh, depending of how much you boiled off we're going to add five liters of water for now method the bag of ice is going to replace some of your water volume so just keep track of that we'll then add the liquid which is your wort starting gravity is just fill a container we fill a hundred mil measuring cylinder with our hydrometer and remember guys these hydrometers are calibrated at, at 22 degrees Celsius so if your water is still at a much higher temperature you will have to wait to let it cool down or you can do an online calculator to calculate the specific gravity so we are currently sitting at 1040 which is perfect for what the recipe calls for and this sample we will not pour back into the fermenter because you are 
at risk of contamination. We will now pitch the yeast. Now guys, this dry yeast you can just sprinkle on top of your wort. You don't, there's no need to stir it in or anything. Seal the bucket properly. Add your bubbler on top with a little bit of sanitizer inside of the bubbler. Now we will leave it for 10 to 14 days to do its job and we'll take another gravity reading to see whether it's fermented out. Now guys, it's not to say that when your bubbler is stopped has stopped bubbling that the uh, fermentation is done it's best to take another reading a gravity reading and if that gravity reading stays the same for two days you know that there's no active fermentation still happening okay guys it's as easy as that so uh, if you've liked the video please give us a like subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah enjoy brewing cheers <laughs>